Hello and welcome to St. Mary Student Parish. We also want to extend a welcome to all of those joining us virtually today. My name is Patricia. Today is Palm Sunday. Our mass will begin in the back of the church with the blessing of the palms and we will end in silent procession. All of the music for today's mass may be found in either the Gather Hymnal, Voices Hymnal, or the Breaking Bread Missalette. Inside the front cover of the Gather Hymnal, you will find the spoken prayers, the creed, and responses. Our liturgy today is for the intention of Dorota Best. Leading us in our celebration is Father Pat, the server is Brian, and Phyllis will be joining me in proclaiming the word of God. Our opening song is Hosanna in the Gather Hymnal. Number 499. Number 499. Is that wrong? No, it's. Please stand and direct your attention to the back. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. That is to say of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in the resurrection and in his life. Now I'm going to bless the palms that you have in your hands and those that are here on the, on the table. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in, uh, in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and we will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered, they answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it. And as he sat on it, and he sat on it, many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following him, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, 
Like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. pray. Almighty ever-living God, who has an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opened my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he <coughs> emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine pikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. 
The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to the man for whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take this. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took, them, he took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may, not under, that you may undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, the betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who came from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. This and, will happen. And they all left him and fled, 
Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, and he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before this, the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds from heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophecy! And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So we went out into the outer courtyard. Then the cock crowed, and the maid saw him, and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace. 
that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole co cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to be crucified. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please all kneel. Please rise. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James, and of Hosus and Sal Sal Salome. These, these women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Hosus, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord.
Jesus enters Jerusalem. The liturgy invites us to share in the joy and celebration of the people who cry out in praise of their Lord, a joy that will fade and leaves a bitter and sorrowful taste by the end of the account of the Passion. This celebration combines stories of joy and suffering, mistakes and successes, which are part of our daily lives as disciples. It somehow expresses the contradictory feelings that we too, the men and women of today, experience. The capacity for great love, but also for great hatred. The capacity for courageous self-sacrifice, but also the ability to wash our hands at the right moment. The capacity for loyalty, but also for great abandonment and betrayal. We also see clearly throughout the Gospel account that the joy Jesus awakens is, for some, a source of anger and irritation. Jesus enters the city surrounded by his people and by a cacophony of singing and shouting. We can imagine that amid the outcry, we hear the voice of the forgiven son, the healed leper, or the bleeding of the lost sheep. Then too, the song of the publican and the unclean man, the cry of those living on the edges of the city, and the cry of those men and women who had followed Jesus because they felt his compassion for their pain and misery. That outcry is the song and sp spontaneous joy of all those left behind and overlooked, who having been touched by Jesus, can now shout, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. How could they not praise the one who had restored their dignity and hope? Theirs is the joy of so many forgotten sinners who can trust and hope once again. All this joy and praise is a source of unease, scandal, and upset for those who consider themselves righteous and faithful to the law and its ritual precepts. A joy unbearable for those hardened against pain, suffering, and misery. A joy intolerable for those who have forgotten the many chances they themselves had been given. How hard it is for the comfortable and the self-righteous to understand the joy and the celebration of God's mercy. How hard it is for those who trust only in themselves and look down on others to share this joy. Here is where another kind of shouting comes from, the fierce cry of those who shout out, crucify him. It is not spontaneous, but already armed with disparagement, slander, and false witness. It is the voice of those who twist reality and invent stories for their own benefit, without concern for the good name of others. The cry of those who have no problem in seeking ways to gain power and to silence dissonant voices. The cry that comes from spinning facts and painting them such that they disfigure the face of Jesus and turn him into a criminal. It is the voice of those who want to defend their own position, especially by discrediting the defenseless. It is the cry born of the show of self-sufficiency, pride, and arrogance, which sees no problem in shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And so the celebration of the people ends being stifled. Hope is demolished, dreams are killed, joy is suppressed. The 
heart is shielded and charity grows cold is a cry of save yourself which would dull our sense of solidarity dampen our ideals and blur our vision it is the cry that wants to erase compassion faced with such people the best remedy is to look at Christ's cross and let ourselves be challenged by his final cry he died crying out his love for each of us young and old saints and sinners the people of his times and of our own we have been saved by his cross and no one can repress the joy of the gospel no one in any situation whatsoever is far from the father's merciful gaze looking at the cross means allowing our priorities choices and actions to be challenged it means questioning ourselves about our sensitivity to those having trouble where is our heart focused does jesus christ continue to be a source of joy and praise in our heart or does its priorities and concerns make us ashamed to look at sinners the least and the forgotten lord give us grace to imitate your son jesus the christ who is kind accepting merciful and loving Amen. Amen. Please join me now in the profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us humans and our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer now all of our needs and intentions to our loving Father. For the church, may its leaders and all of us be guided by the example of Jesus in showing compassion, humility, and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of St. Mary's, together may we pray to entrust every aspect of our lives into God's hands and to grow in our desire that God's will be done in all things. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, as he marks his 11th anniversary, may he receive strength to carry forth in the duties of leadership with vigor in the Holy Spirit and be blessed with restful healing of body. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the staff of St. Mary's and the hundreds of people preparing for Holy Week and Easter liturgies, 
May each receive the support they need and have time for rest and personal prayer. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick who have been entrusted to our prayers. We add to our list this week Claudia Villalobos, Rosie Villalobos, Sean Everly, Ben Brelje, and Sarah Stanley. And we continue to pray for those who are listed in the bulletin. May they all be comforted and cared for in their suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who followed and depended on Christ during life and who now have recently died, may they abide eternally with our compassionate God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, give us the grace to be compassionate, merciful, and loving in imitation of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We invite you to give your offerings to God at this time to be presented at his altar. If there is a basket near you or under your chair, would you pass it, please? We invite everyone to participate in the communion procession. If you are not receiving communion as a practicing Catholic, please be invited to come up for a blessing by crossing your arms, no matter your faith background. Our song during the presentation of gifts is number 491 in Gather, number 491.
And let us pray. That this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, our Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. So, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord, my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with one voice with the words Jesus taught us. Let's pray to our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please give one another a sign of peace and friendship. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our first communion song is number five in Voices as One. Number five in Voices as One.
and let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you like, please bow your head for a, for a blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God bless you with a holy and grace-filled holy week. Amen.